Hey, it's Kia. You may remember a few months back, we were getting to grips with how to join the property market as a first time buyer. If you missed it, make sure you go back and listen. But this time, I want to talk about next steps. You bought your first property a few years back and life has moved on. Maybe you're thinking of starting a family and want to buy a bigger home. Or perhaps you're looking at a property as more of a financial investment. Or maybe it's a bit of both. Whatever the case, there's a lot to talk about when it comes to moving up the property ladder. Also, it might be you're listening to this and thinking, I'm not even close to buying my first house. And that's totally fine too. There's still lots of useful information in this episode if you're considering trying to become a homeowner. With me to chat through all of this is Liam Anshava. Liam is an independent mortgage advisor who set up the Mortgage Advice Club to help people with the home buying process. So Liam, let's get into the nitty gritty of this. When is a good time to start thinking about the next step? Yeah, fantastic. So I think with the next step, there's usually two key factors that will come into play for people. Usually they tend to be social or financial. So whether it be they've had a kid or they're potentially having a kid and they need to take that next step up to get more size, you want to start considering that probably before that happens so that you're ready for the impending arrivals. Secondly, it'll be financial. So whether it be with the way that property values have been kind of going, you know, your property values went up, you want to take advantage, or you've you've got that first step in stone in the market, but you've got new jobs, you've got more money in, you want to get that property that might be a longer term property for you and your partner or yourself, then that's the time you want to say, right, now's the time to start looking, see what we can afford, what can we get, and then look to see what properties you can get for that budget. I think that's amazing. I think, it, like you said, it's just figuring out where you are to know when you're going to take your next step. So I want to then ask you, what are some of the challenges that people may face if they are actually looking to buy a bigger place? I think I think the biggest one just now is affordability. I think with the way rates are just now, as I said, we've got we've got a whole generation who are used to, you know, my generation who are used to seeing rates at one, two percent, not much higher than that. They're now double that. So that's going to have a massive impact on the monthly the payment. Electricity ain't cheap, your council tax is going to be higher. So it's mainly about that monthly budget and you really need to have a think about it. And obviously when we're speaking to our clients, we go through that with you anyway to make sure, you know, first step, is this affordable for you? But it's about making sure that this step is worth it. Or it might mean that the next step might not be your forever home. It might be like a middle step. Mm. It doesn't necessarily mean you need to go from first house, first flat to forever home. There might be that middle property that you're like, right, it's bigger, we can afford just now, but, you know, it's only a five-year plan and then planning to get that next step on it i love that because i think it is about being realistic i think i'm not a property owner yet but what i can relate that to is cars yeah. so you know you have your first car and then when you come to move up you're probably not going to jump straight to your dream car because that's probably no. going to be way out of budget so you're going to need something slightly bigger and i think when you put it in that perspective it makes sense i think a lot of people either enter the property ladder thinking they're going to live in their five bedroom mansion when they can't afford it yeah. or they think i've come from my you know in my one bed flat and i'm going to go straight into that mansion where it is stepping stones maybe it's figuring out like you said the in between that is better suited and i, th- for your I think that's something that um is changing back when you know when i bought my first property seven eight years ago you got a small flat, you got you got maybe a bigger flat or a medium house with a garden and things, and then you got your forever home. There, there was kind of historically all that three-step process. Because of the way rates were, younger people having good wages, they tend to just skip from like zero to 100 really quick. Whereas you're starting to see it now because of the way rates are, property values have went up a lot over the last few years as well. You're starting to get that, you know, start at the cheaper, lower flat, but then take that middle step, then the forever home. So it's kind of naturally going back to that after the kind of, low rate period that we've had over the last five years yeah amazing so we're gonna have that three step in mind when it comes to getting up property ladder and taking it in bits moving up and getting the bigger property so i want to then ask you what about if you want second property because not everyone wants to you know move up and sell the one they've got so what if you want a second property but you also want to keep the one that you have already is that a good idea or should maybe someone think about getting rid of their first one no, a lot of it depends on your, your financial circumstances personally. I mean, what you'd be moving on to there would be becoming a, a landlord. So you'd be moving into getting rental income, so an, an extra revenue source. But, you know, there's there's pros and cons to both sides. Uh, the deposits tend to be a little bit higher if you're buying a property to rent out or if you're staying in your current, your current property you've got and you're buying another one, you need to have that equity to be able to do that. 
Um, so it, it can be great for for some people. A lot of people, you know, if, if they've got that entrepreneurial sense in them, they want to make money. They want to make money from property, and you know, they might buy more further down the line and make it a real revenue income. It is possible to do something called let to buy, which is where you let out your existing property, and then you go buy another property. And obviously, with that, things to consider. You know, there's going to be additional stamp duty things like that as well. But as you say, if you've got the finance there and you've 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 got the understanding of it by speaking to somebody like ourselves, then it's definitely something that you can do. So let's kind of delve into a bit more than on getting your second property if you did want to become a landlord, because people who are listening, we've spoken about getting your first property, and you know, there's all kinds of mortgage products on the market. You can get, you know, there's, there's no deposit, there's five cent deposit, ten percent. So is that the same if you're going to buy a second property that's an investment property or how does that differ? It differs. You, you you need to have more of a deposit when you're buying a buy to let at that point. If you already got a property and you're buying one. So it tends to be twenty to twenty five percent is the kind of minimum. There are certain circumstances where if it's for a family member or things like that, it doesn't the deposit doesn't have to be that high, but generally nine times out of ten it will be a higher deposit. Mm. Uh, one of the main differences is, is or what people will tend to do with buy-to-let properties is it will be on an interest-only basis because you want to make as much money as possible from that rental income. So your monthly payments will be substantially lower because you're making that the, the profit from what your the rent's coming in. Um, but as I said, with the way rates are just now, there's a lot of landlords are probably going the other way rather than coming in. So, But again, sometimes that can be a benefit if you come in at this time you're going to make more money as the rates come down. Mm, I mean, I think everyone loves, when you hear making money, everyone's ears prick up and they want to hear about that. But you did mention something there that's kind of want you to expand a little bit more. It's interest only mortgage. What What is that for anyone who doesn't know? Yeah, so so with with the, when it's a second property, it's not the home you live in, the, the risk is lower because in the worst case scenario, if you had to sell that property, it's not the one you're living in. So there's less of an impact on you. How lenders treat buy-to-let properties is it's not based on your income, it's based on the mortgage payment versus the rental income. So it's a completely different thing and it tends to be a little bit probably easier on personal circumstances than what a residential home would be. So interest only is where you're just paying the interest and you're not bringing down any of the mortgage balance. So obviously if it's your home you're living in, you don't want to be doing that. You want to be bringing down your mortgage, get it paid off as soon as possible, happy days, you enjoy your retirement with no mortgage. With a rental property, you want to get as much rental income out of that and at the end of the day, when you get to the end of the term, you're ready to retire and you don't need it anymore, you can just sell it and you'll still have that, you know, fingers crossed, your property values went up a little bit as well. So you kind of get that win-win from Hope, a little bit of an equity boost and also the rental income as well. Amazing. I think that's good to know for people. I think there's all kinds of mortgage products and it can be so confusing, but, you know, you break it down if you're going down that route for an investment property, that makes sense there. But let's kind of bring it back. So someone who wants to get a second property in general, whether they want to get it for investment or just for them to have themselves, what would you recommend that people keep in mind when they are coming to actually make this decision? Yeah, so if they're moving up the property ladder, I think one of the, the biggest things, especially with the way rates are just now, a lot of people will be used to low rates. We've had low rates for about 10 years. So anyone who's going to take that next step now is going to get a little bit of a shock on how much higher the interest rates are. If you're getting a bigger house, it tends to be a bigger mortgage which automatically mean a bigger monthly payment, more electricity, higher council tax. You know, there's a lot of things you have to consider about your budget. So you, the main thing people need to consider is speak to someone like ourselves or even have a little look online on calculators and things to see, is that property even just going to be affordable? Even with, the you know, the, whether it's a change in income or you're needing that extra space, is it affordable? Because that's the most important thing is making sure that property is affordable for you, uh, whether it be so. And also... If you're buying a bigger property, you're probably going to have higher stamp duties, another thing, higher solicitor costs, furnishing other rooms. You know, there's a whole lot of other costs and things you need to think about. So it's that monthly budget you're thinking about as well as the, the kind of upfront cost. I love the fact that you mentioned affordability because I think it's great to be in a property ladder number one. And if yeah. you can move up, and that's another great achievement. But it is making sure you don't overextend yourself, you know, just for the sake of being able to say, you know, I've got two properties now instead of just one. Yeah. It's, it's like you said, it's factoring in and making sure, have I figured out? Because like I said, now I'm getting two mortgages and not just one. Now there's double the expenses. Can I actually physically afford this? And if it is if it is an additional property route you're going down, you've, you've also got to think about, have you got time and is it worth the hassle as well? Because being a landlord is a great, great idea. It's about, do you have the time to manage that property as well? Because as much as you can get letting agents and things to do it, but that will bring down what you make in the end. So it's about thinking about, do you have that time, patience, um, the, le- the stress levels to deal with that as well as the finances behind it? Yeah, I completely agree with you. So Liam, I want to end the episode how I always end it, asking, I guess, the same question. What are your top three tips to help our listeners get a little bit richer? 
Yeah, sure. So, so not being biased, but uh, the first one <laughs> I would say is um, speak to speak to a broker. You know, whether it's ourselves or, or somebody else. You compare your car insurance, you compare your home insurance, you compare everything. Your mortgage is the biggest loan you're ever going to have. Compare it when your product comes to an end. We've got all the lenders. We look across them all. We do this day in day out. We know what we're looking for. So to save as much money as possible, get that lowest rate. Go with whoever the best lender is at that time. It will change probably in two years, five years time when you look again. But that's what we're here for. We want to save you as much money as possible, get your mortgage paid off as soon as possible so you can enjoy your retirement and your mortgage-free home as soon as possible because that's the most important thing. That's the end goal. In regards to kind of making money or, or saving money when you're selling and buying, when you're selling your home, it, it sounds daft and obvious, but if you're taking that next step in the property ladder, just the cosmetic stuff, you know, when you're selling, if there's little jobs that are kind of outstanding or, or, or you know superficial things that need done to make it look that little bit better, and that little bit more marketable, do it, pay that little bit extra because that little few hundred pounds might be a few thousand pounds in somebody else's eyes because they don't have to do it. They don't have the hassle. So when you're coming to sell the property, just make it as beautiful and as marketable as possible so that you're getting the most for what you're selling it for because, again, it's a knock-on impact on hopefully getting you that little bit of a better property at the other end. And last but not least, when you're looking to buy your property, your next one, whether it be an investment or whether it be your next step on the ladder, negotiate don't just you know if you see a property there use tools like right move how long has it been in the market for how long's the market is, is changing again you know last two years it's been very very hot property is going in two three weeks really really quick that's not it's, it's starting to change again and normalize and so don't just think that you have to go anywhere with your maximum offer negotiate it put a low offer in first the worst thing that can happen is it gets rejected and then you go in again and you go in again so the three things there are obviously saving on your mortgage, using somebody like a broker to get the best monthly payment on your mortgage. Next one, when you're selling your property, getting as much money as you can for your old one. So just making sure all those cosmetic touches and nice and tidy photos and things. And I'm sure the stage will help you with this as well. And then when you're putting in offers, don't be shy. Don't think you have to, whatever the stage has told you or the person selling it's told you, put an offer in. The worst thing that can happen is they say no. I love those. Those tips are really good, especially the one to negotiate. Yeah. I'm always saying this. Make sure you negotiate. Don't always take the first price you're given. See what you can get. And like I said, don't go with your maximum offer. Yeah. See if you can get it lower. If you have to get there, then you get there eventually. But, you know, go in lower and see what you can get. You'd be surprised. Liam, this has been a great episode. You've no, shared so you. many gems. Thank you so much for coming on. Next time, I'm chatting all things credit. What is credit? What do we need to be careful of? And can debt actually be a positive thing? We'll get into all of it. But while you wait, if a little bit richer is helping you, then be sure to leave a review, hit follow and tell a friend. It all helps other people find us. See you next time.